Well, hello everybody. This is John Michael, and I'm going to continue on a little bit uh, with my story about how I came back to Christianity, and then why why did I go on to become a Catholic? A lot of people have always wondered that. So uh, I had told you so far that you know I, I I I got involved with the Jesus movement, gave my life back to Christ, and I got involved with a new Christian record company called Sparrow Records. Back then. It was only five artists and about 14 employees out of Canoga Park, California. Now it's the biggest Christian record company in the world. But back then, uh, you know, it was the early days of the Jesus movement. So I started traveling back and forth across the United States to, to support a record I made called John Michael Talbot. And here's the deal. I would go to one church and follow me on this. They'd have three things. They'd be good people. They'd have the Spirit of God. And they'd go to the Bible to try to figure out how do we follow Jesus, and how do we all do that together and stay together? And I would do my ministry, and usually with the youth, or uh, you know, and we would get along great. And then they'd take me to the airport, and I'd I'd travel out to the next city, and I'd go to another church, and it'd be the same three things. They would be good people, they'd have the Spirit of God, and they'd go to the Bible to try to figure out. How do we follow Jesus and how do we do that together? And we get along great. Same, same scenario. Except I found out that this church over here didn't get along with this church over here. They couldn't fellowship together. They didn't agree about what Jesus said or how we're supposed to live together as Christians. And that broke my heart because when I came to Christ, Jesus actually healed me. He He brought me together. He uh, gosh, the guys in the band said, what happened to John Michael? He, be, he became a pretty nice guy all of a sudden. I believe, you know, there's an old saying, Jesus doesn't make freaks out of people, he makes people out of freaks. And, and that's what I was experiencing. So it broke my heart to see the division in Christianity. So in my young little Christian life, I knew this much. I said, well, if we're, if we're getting separated on how to interpret certain passages of the Scripture, even to the point that it's not diversity, it's just division, uh, let's go back to the early church from which the Scriptures came and see if we can't find at least a substantial agreement among them as to how to live that Scripture. And then we can apply it to our situation today in a developed way, because I knew that the Bible was compiled by, it was written by, uh, God, but by human beings, and compiled uh, by the early church. So let's go back to the early church from which the scriptures came and see how they did it, and then let's see if we can't come closer together by applying that to our situation. Now, uh, when I did that, I was utterly shocked to discover the primitive expressions of what today we'd call the Catholic faith. It was all there, apostolic succession in the bishops, a uh, special role for the Bishop of Rome, in leadership, uh, presidency, they called it, a pre, uh, pres presidency of love. Uh, golly, the communion of saints and a special, special love for Mary. The sacraments were all there, especially the sacrament of the Eucharist. You know, now you need to understand something, folks. I did not want to be a Catholic. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like Catholics. Uh, wasn't looking to be a Catholic. Still working on liking Catholics a little bit today. <laughs> but the Lord gave me a word, and this word is important. Jesus said, and this was what I now know is called a locution, a little still small voice that said, John Michael, I want you to become a Catholic. She is my first church. I love her most dearly. But she's been sick, and she's nearly died. I'm going to heal her, and I'm going to raise her up to new life again, and I want you to be a part of her. Wow. Wow. So I said, Amen. So I went and sought out a Franciscan priest at a Franciscan retreat center in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, placed myself under his direction, and about a year later, in 1978, I was received into the Catholic Church. Now, I share that with you today for a reason, and that's because, you know, the world is discouraged. We're discouraged about politics. We're discouraged about the economy. We're discouraged about the church in many places. So uh, I believe that we need to hear that word today. We need to hear that word today. And, you know, uh, golly, 
what's the big elephant in the room? The elephant in the room is the sex scandals with our new Pope, Pope Francis. One of the things we're hoping is that he's going to fix the curia and he's going to fix some of the scandals in the church and uh, bring purity and bring us back together. And, and he's doing it already. So I'm excited about Pope Francis. But, uh, you know, so we, are, we, we have a great Pope and we've enacted some policies and procedures. I, I can't go into a parish and minister unless I stay current on my virtues training uh, about how to discover and what to do if you see abuse, especially sexual abuse in the church. So these are all good things. Let's lighten it up, though. Here's the real key. Popes, they come and they go. We've just seen it. Bishops, they come and they go. We've had good ones. We've had saints. We've had sinners. We've had scoundrels. Even parish priests, you know, God bless them. They come and they go. We've had great ones. We've had lousy ones. And hallelujah, even the members of the local pastoral council, what we used to call the parish council, guess what? They come and they go. <laughs> Praise God. Guess who doesn't come and go? Jesus does not come and goes. The book of Hebrews says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. He remains with us through it all. So if we keep our focus on Christ, he will give us whatever we need to face any problem in the church or in the world. It's like stepping out of the boat and walking on water. You know, when Peter stepped out of the boat, he could walk on water. He could work miracles because Jesus was having him participate in his miracle. But as soon as he got his eyes off of Christ and on to the storm, on to the problems, he began to sink. The same thing is true for us. If we get our eyes on to the problems of the church or of the world, and we don't keep our focus on Christ, we'll begin to sink beneath those waves. See? So we need to focus on Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then Jesus will give us whatever we need to face any challenge in the church or in the world. Here's the deal. The Catholic Church is his first church. He loves her most dearly. Yes, she has been sick and nearly died, not only in this period of history, but in other parts of history. But he always heals us and raises us back up to new life in Christ if we will but keep our focus on him. So keep your focus on Jesus. Let's dare to get excited about our faith in Christ. And you Catholics, dare to get excited about your Catholic faith again. And if we do this, we're going to be able to walk on water with Jesus. Now, if you believe that, say a big amen with me. And then let's join hands and let's work miracles for Christ. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. Have a great day. And walk on water with Jesus. He's healing us and raising us up to new life again. Amen. God bless you.